What's going on, y'all? It's your man Hanley from On The Line with uh, Car Chats, episode 64. We got Chris Crone coming on, another Montreal homie. I've uh, got to know him over the last couple of years, uh, both through him and vicariously through Holden Stephen Roy. Stefan Roy. I always call it Holden Stephen Roy. Is that since I, I feel dyslexic sometimes. <laughs> Hi, Brittany. But, uh, hello, Victoria. Just waiting for Chris Crone to jump in and we'll get to it. I can't believe I forgot my drink upstairs. I'm going to fucking die of parch. Just being parched. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yes or no? Mr. Chris Brown. What up, bro, bro? Hey, man. I'm okay. How are you? How's the weekend treating you? Hey. Same old shit. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. It's been a crazy week performing, getting like designs finished, man, working I'm on so music. I'm so proud of how much you've been performing. Thank you. Bro, like, like, Thank you. Since our last conversation and stuff, like watching like the level up and like the evolution, like the evolution in your in your game and like your your music has just been it's been awesome to see because like when we first I talked, that. you didn't really like. I mean, you you knew what you were talking about, but you just weren't sure how to like explain it. And now it seems yeah. like you found like what you want to speak about, and you still intertwine everything you deal with, which is great. I mean, the most part, for the most part, I just try to be as honest as possible. Like, that's really just my go-to. Like, Being vulnerable is, is, is easier than faking, man. So, like, everyone asks me this question, right? Like, why is it I'm so comfortable to, like, rap and cry oh. on mics and, like... K-Rim. <laughs> Shout out K-Rim. Yo, bro, did you... Did you see the story I posted about K Rhymes? Is I know it's like my interview, but I have to shout him out for this. He had an electric version of his song, bro. That's wild. Yeah, like on that, stage, he wants to do like uh, the whole band type thing. I told him like, "Yo, who are you, Plus Love?" Bro, he's <laughs> killing it. Like, straight, no, yo, straight up. Dope, All bro. love to K Rhymes. He's straight killing it. What up, Prestige? I see you in the chat. Prestige was actually the dude who was on stage. Uh, doing the electric version of Feel So Good from k Rhymes. So that's actually pretty cool that they're here. Well, like, all I, just gave, I just gave Prestige a follow. If you want to interview anytime, you hit me up. People can vouch. I do it all the time. We're on the Look road to 100 episodes by midsummer, bro. We're on 65 after I do Wooly later. We all on roads. We all trying to, like, level up and get our get our points and our views and our, like, Clock, clocking in even, our uh, I don't even know why content. I want 100 episodes so bad I'm just like 100 yeah <laughs> no it's a milestone like when you hit 100 episodes it's like oh shit I actually did 100 episodes like it's kind of like when you did I don't know first you, you start off with nothing and then you do 10 and you're like oh shit I've just done 10 and then that turns into like 50 and you're like oh shit I've done 50 and then that turns into 100 bro like you know me and Holden work very very closely, right? Yeah, I just shouted him out. I said that I said that I've been following your music through you and getting to know you, but also vicariously through HSR. <laughs> Bro, I don't even know like what episode of like the album reviews we're on, but it goes quick. And if you put in the work and you dedicate yourself and you do the shit, like it'll go and you'll just be clocking out numbers. But you gotta have fun with it. Must, yeah. You know, when you're doing the work, you got to have fun with it. So you don't really look at it as like a job. You find that like, for lack of a better word, like positive silver lining or some shit. Like very like cliche, like, you know, like if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Eh. But, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, you just got to like what you do. Yeah, exactly. You know, and like. I'm in the midst of dealing with, like, so much, like, family shit that, like, I, like, miss employment. So, like, this is, like, how I de deal with my free time. So, I'm like, yeah. if I don't have anything to do, I might as well get to know more artists. Oh, 
it also is in line with what you're doing, right? Like you've been doing the media thing for a minute now. You've also done some of the rapping. You're coming back. Like I'm not, I, I edited your interview, so like, <laughs> bro, I'm the wrong person to be doing just, that. You're supposed to tell me before. Bro, I'm just kidding. I say it in every episode, and then after every episode, someone messages me. They're like, "Yo, when are you dropping a new track?" I'm like, "Here's my old SoundCloud. Just go listen to that for now." <laughs> sure. Fair enough. Yep. Fair enough. I have a bunch of shit written. I just haven't found the studio I want to go to. That's why I want to come to Montreal so fucking bad because I know there at least I could go work with like MCO or something because he knows his shit and like I could I could trust him with like working with me because like he works in, like he makes the sound from the era that I'm like comfortable in. Like so like take Rico Blocks for example, just straight bars. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Bars and story. So, like, that's, like, I mean, I love making, like, melody tracks and, like, very, like, vulnerable tracks like you do. But my vulnerable tracks come with, like, just straight bars. It's just, I'm just bluntly telling you what is wrong with me. You I've know? Like, never been, like, I appreciate bars and I, like, in all of hip-hop, I appreciate the bar structure. I appreciate the metaphors and everything. But I say this in, like, every interview. My brain just doesn't. Like when it comes to writing, my brain just doesn't make bars, bro. No, like when we when we talk about right? bars, like I just can't do it, bro. It's like I rather just build this like story of some relationship, some sort of like internal conflict and like just get super creative with it. Which don't don't get me wrong, like bars are absolutely creative. Like I've heard some bars where I'm like, How do these people come up with it? Like where does your brain go? I, I always love the like 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 immortal techniques like dancing with the devil like mm. all those and that whole story like it's a fucked up story mind you but i mean like let's not like, like consistently dropping hard bars throughout that whole thing but in essence at least for me and my point of view it's like it's still a story like you don't yeah. have to focus so much on the bars and like decrypt everything he's saying he's very clear and like what the theme of the story is he's very descriptive and how he like goes about it so you know else, it's like there's, there's a balance you know who else used to rap like that who i used to like have to decipher his lyrics all the time mm. like mm. even though i dislike him now i don't dislike him but i just find him a little arrogant now but he's always been an asshole but uh joe budden he's like one person from back in the day like his mood music series and shit bro if you listen to those fucking albums those albums like man i that those those albums got me through some dark times, man. And when, like, I got to open for Budden when I was still rapping and shit. Wild. That was the time. Shout out Peter Jackson for for hosting that. And uh, who else was hosting that? Uh, oh, what the record Ottawa? Yeah, that was a fucking wild night. That party bus was dangerous. We shouldn't have had that. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get me on a party bus one day. We will. I mean, Joe, I was. We will. Joe Budden's more of, like, the podcast character for me. Like, I know he raps, and I know he's really good, and, like, but I fell into, like, pump it up. That's where I found Joe Budden was, like, whatever I, Fast and the Furious movie was. Joe Budden at, and they're like, eh. And I'm like, no, 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 you gotta listen to this, please. Like, <laughs> trust me, he no, doesn't I mean, hear this all the time. Don't get me wrong. Like, like I know he's well-regarded, and, like, I give him all his respect, but I think I, I personally just enjoy him more on the podcast side. Like, I for a long minute i was like religiously listening to every episode like yeah. making sure i caught up and like i don't know i find his personality in podcasting and just how he's like brutally honest and just blunt with a lot of shit is just dope like yeah. oh, no. but i also he's listen to like podcasts and like and he stands on his opinions on all 10 like i'll give him that yeah. like he does not yeah. step away from his opinion even if he does get smacked in the face by Wu Tang members, he does not step away from his opinion. Bro, but sometimes that shit happens, man. Like that's part of the that's part of like the game. I find like you're gonna end up saying some shit. Like you can only go so long with like yeah. being politically correct or like not hurting anybody's feelings or not stepping on toes, right? Yeah. Like eventually just in terms of conversation, whether you're telling like a story or there's like some sort of explanation or like the truth or whatever you want to go with it, it's like somebody's going to get upset. Somebody's going to be, you know, hurt. Like I try my best to like be honest and upfront, but like, you know what I learned? Shut the fuck up. 
just that's really stay, it. Stay to your like music and like don't get involved in any petty rap bullshit. Bro, like speak when spoken to is one of the, like. I feel you're like maybe one of the, more of an observer than a talker. I mean, I, I can talk. No. It's just. <laughs> I, like, I, I can talk, right? I like, I could have conversations and I could go, but it's just, it took me a very long time to realize, like, sometimes it's better, like, in certain rooms, just shut the fuck up. Like, listen, absorb, gather the information, see what people are doing, and just learn from it. Like, don't, don't taint the learning opportunity with whatever it is you think you know or whatever. It's just, yo, you're clearly here for a reason. Just be a fucking fly in the wall. Yeah. Yeah. So but we all take our journeys. We do. I just said that to Willie. Actually, I'm like, we all take our different journeys to learn. Wow, that's funny. What a weird, what a weird day the universe is making us. But bro, it's been a weird week. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a really it's been a weird, weird week. It's been a weird life. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's a real one. That's yeah, a real one. But, uh, before we segue into into your music, because I know we were just talking about stories and stuff like that, and obviously you're a story, you're a storyteller and a very like a very happy storyteller, but also very vulnerable too. So we'll get into that. But first, shout out to my sponsor for the Weirdos Apparel. If you guys want anything from them, hit their shop and then hit me up, and I'll give you a special discount. Code. What there a you go. plug I just did. <laughs> But shout out to four of the weirdos there. They got some dope apparel. I really like them. And their windbreakers are dope. I gotta get me a new windbreaker. Yo, bro, I'm telling you, check them. They're a fucking decent price. Send me the link after and I'll check them out. I will. And I'll give you the code too. Dope. Woo! Look at that. So you get an interview and then you get codes. People yeah. pull up. Yeah, if you're an artist you're, and you want some shit, next, pull up. Next week sometime. If you're on Instagram and you see me live, I suggest people tune in because I'm going to be giving away fucking tracksuits from my new sponsor and shit. Shout out fucking Diamond Rising out of New Mexico. Shout out, shout out. Sponsor. <clears throat> but we're going to have like a big announcement soon. We're just waiting to get, I'm, we're waiting to get everything together and shit. But I'm thinking like a storefront and running it out of like Canada for them. It could be a whole new venture for them. Okay, so you're just going to be like the manager of a yeah, store, basically. They want, like you're going to run already, the trip. I'm already promoting and doing the giveaways and, and stuff like that. Going to be, I have a photo shoot coming up. I don't know why I still do photo shoots. I don't even rap. I just do a podcast. But anyways. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> photo shoots are worth it. Just like, hold up. On just that, on like really quick tip, like a Chris tip, photo shoots are really important because like even in my real life, like outside of being a rapper and all this shit, it's like. Bro, you never know when you need, like, a good photo. You never know when you need, like, a headshot for, like, an interview or something. Like, you just never know. It's just good to have, like... This is why I like talking to you, because we're very like-minded, and, like, what you just said is exactly what I think. <laughs> I mean, it's it's also, like, where we're going, right? Like, I remember it was the craziest thing. It's just, I was doing my, my CV, my resume, and, like, this girl I was dating at the time, she was, like, helping me do it, and she was like, you should put a photo on it. I was like, Why? Like, what difference does it make? Do and they, she was like, well, sorry? Do they really do that nowadays? I mean, like, she, she did it, and her reasoning was, like, legit, bro. She was like, everyone else doesn't put a photo. You want to stand out, put a photo. And I was like, That's yo, one plus one is two, bro. <laughs> like, you can't, you can't <laughs> fight it. Like, you can't fight the truth, bro. So like, I tried it. It worked. I mean, I did, like, I'm not saying, like, because I did it, I got not the job, but, like, I guess that's how it happened, you know? Like, I just clearly wasn't getting jobs before. I tried something new, and it worked, so. There you go, bro. That's dope, though. So, yeah, so, uh, Hollow Tape 3, Distant Lover, give, give me, give me, like, the synopsis of it first. Hollow Tape 3, Distant Lover is the third installment of my Hollow Tape series I'm creating. Um... The song itself is actually me admitting to cheating on a partner. Um, that's that's the whole song. Ooh. It starts with me like in the morning, I'm going out, left my house, I'm on like I'm in a place I don't know, and it's really just a love story about me meeting up with this girl, well this woman, and we end up 
basically we end up fucking but there's no like there's no actual love there's no like intimacy it's really just kind of disconnected lust or disparity for affection or validation or however like you want to call it um sounds like but, my <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like a lot. Of, it sounds like a lot of relationships. <laughs> no, but but like, I, I, I at least like some people. You ask them to give like a description of their song, and they're just like, uh, and I'm like, bro, you you literally rap it all the time. <laughs> well, like that's the thing, right? So it's it's that's the that's what the actual song is about. Like that's when I when I rap that song and I'm talking about like gliding into the night and I'm not giving a fuck. It's like just the way I live my life sometimes and how I've lived my life. It's like, I just kind of do what I want. I don't really think about consequences at times. I just am very impulsive. It does tie into like my ADHD. If you've heard my other music and kind of know my story. Well, we talked um, about the first episode for anybody watching. Yeah. We have the first episode where I first talked to Chris for the first time. That was a good interview actually. Dude, I went off on that interview. I remember yeah. like I went I had, off. I was like, like bro, save some for the actual podcast like <laughs> bro that was crazy but um we gotta sorry get, it cut out yeah we still gotta, gotta get you on the actual podcast too i just got so many, so many episodes that i gotta like edit and polish like i got rico blocks coming up on episode five or six i forget i think it's most nice. i think it goes, i think it's going my guy michael gannon from toronto then i think it goes mo dirt from B bc and then i think it goes the blocks and then ras cast is coming on after that there you go yes you got that whole line i did for everybody no worries um but like that's just what the song is about right and then i feel like i tie it up i tie it up uh in the end of the song where i address the fact that we're both just two people who don't want to like grow up essentially like, we don't want to let go of our innocence. We still want to, like, do things and not get in trouble and kind of, like, live in this gray area and not really making any commitments, not really making any, like, solid decisions. And that's just kind of, like, what, this, what the song is about. Um, I ended up recording a music video to it. And it's crazy because, like, only after the music video was finished, which once we hit 15K on the song, I'm going to drop that. So... Y'all want to go run that up? Please do. Much love and support. I do appreciate it. Um, go run that shit up. Hit, make it hit fifteen k. How many? How how far are you away from it? Uh, I still got five hundred left. Like I'm a little bit under five hundred. I'm like four fourteen, four eighty seven or something. Let's make them hit five hundred more hits before fucking uh, by Monday. Let's do that. It'd be crazy. I'm, I'm, absolutely I'm insane. Interview and make sure that I have this clip shared so that way we get that shit up there. Appreciate you, bro. bro. Um, we're gonna try. We're gonna try myself because I want to see the video. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? So, like with the video, it was super like, like I'm really excited to drop it because it gives, like, it gives a different aspect to the song. Like a lot of my music, when I write it, I do write it very uh, directed to like a specific story in a sense. But it also parallels a lot of other situations and like double entendres as like just other things. Hey, like that's hey. why I'm talking about What up, Holden? What up? Hey Tessa. Um I shouted you out like three times already. But that's why uh, in the chorus I'm like talking about how I'm just living my disorder when I should be in bed. It's like I'm also trying to keep it open ended where it's not so much about like love or cheating or like going out and trying to like hook up with people or whatever. It's, it's also like people just have certain vices. People have certain things that they do that sometimes that's like, they kind of feel like guilty about doing it, but they're still going to do it. Right. Yeah. And that's just it. It's like, it's like, it's living with that. Like, bro, I don't know why the fuck I keep fucking up. It's really that mentality. It's like, why do I keep making mistakes? Why do I keep finding myself in this position? And that's kind of like what the song's about. Right. Um, on a bigger scale, though, because it's the third installment, it is an ongoing story. So if you listen to Holotape 1, 
I split that into two parts. I don't know if we talked about it on the last interview, but I split that into two parts on the um, It Goes Beyond Skin Deep project I did, um, which has Holotape 1 and Holotape 2. Now, the reason I did that is because Holotape 1 kind of starts off the Holotape series with this, like, getting to know me, I'm venting, I'm just kind of diving into my brain, but I split it up so that when, throughout the project, when you get to Holotape 2, you start to learn, like, oh, he's got love issues, he's got relationship issues, but it also doubles as me discussing a relationship with anxiety. Right. So that's, like why hollow tape two for me is super like personal because it's 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 not so much about a direct relationship it's really about me dealing with my anxiety and how like in my head i kind of dance with this like in, i mean it's a female for me but this like figure of anxiety and how i and how i kind of live life with it um and then you throughout the story you find hollow tape part one hollow tape one part two and it continues this like weird sporadic like venting energy rage where it's very deep lore to be fair if anybody who really knows me and i and because i deal with adhd it's like i'm sort of sporadic like that i'm sort of up and down like that like i'll have my moments where i'm like super raging and then suddenly it's like i'm just super calm and then like something will be said or like a story will happen and i'll get triggered and i'm going into like this whole bad back into something else and this whole other like perception or perspective of like whatever that thing was so a lot of yeah maybe how do you manage that i I don't know but like i i definitely like in recent years with the whole bipolar thing i've definitely gotten like a lot worse like mood wise like my anger is like fucking through the roof but i think that has a lot to do with like the stress of like the whole like situations going on around me in the environment, but like that that's out of my hands. I can't really control that. But I also can't control my mental illness either. So like <laughs> like I'm in like a I'm like in a spot where I'm like, well this sucks. I think I mean I don't really know how to deal with bipolar to be fair. Bro, um I, but I don't they they don't even fucking know how because they tried like every medication on me and I'm like it just makes me worse. And they're like well they're like, we're going to have to send you for tests, but it's going to take two years on a waiting list. I'm like, oh, that's great. So, like, I have this constant fucking idea of wanting to off myself for two years. Yeah, but yeah, I'll wait. Assholes. Like, yeah. Like, that's you, a... can try, you can try private care. I'm like, Are you guys fucking, like. <laughs> that's a very heavy topic. I do, I do. I do. I question here. I don't mean to cut you off. No, first, but someone, it's fine. Uh, Kate, no. Nova one said, can we get your opinion about consistencies? But I don't know if she's asking me or you. Well, consistencies on, like, what yeah. exactly, like, in terms of... Elaborate, please. And I'll, I don't mind answering it. I didn't even know people could do that. They, why is she... Uh, Jesus, what? I don't... I don't understand. Should I think... In How Lin dies... Okay, can you, I'm, I'm very lost now. Are you talking about the Wu-Tang? <laughs> cool i mean bro that's like a very heavy topic um i think the best thing sometimes is to just detach and like i don't really talk about religion and politics because it just gets out of control sometimes so like i'm the wrong guy to talk religion or politics to be fair i mean i am i am not that dude like in, like in person with people but like like over the like interweb nah not doing it I get that. I get very I get that. sometimes, and, I'm, and they're like, oh, and I'm like, oh, here we go, another ban on Facebook. But see, that, that's where it comes back to what I was saying earlier, right? Like, at one point, we do this for so long, and I'm not saying I've been doing this forever. Like, I still got many years to go, but it's like you, you have so many conversations on lives. You have so many podcasts. You have so many interactions that, like, eventually you're going to say something that's going to piss somebody off, and it's like... Just kind of way the industry works. Yeah, I don't know. Definitely, I have plenty of plenty of things I've said during interviews that have pissed people off, and like, 
like I was talking to Holden in our in the interview for Bridge the Gap when he was like, "Oh, you like edit the episodes and shit like that." And I'm like, "Well, yeah, because like sometimes there's shit that they don't want in it." So I'm like, "All right, well, luckily I can take that out." What up, Cripple? Yo, shout out to Cripple, man. New track with Justin Cohen and uh, hey. I forget who else we heard, but dope track, bro. Very dope track. Uh, check the video out. And Cripple, I still want you on the show. Please come on the show. Okay, Victoria Walker, how does your ADHD affect your music? Is it harder to write or find a good flow for your... I'm oh, sorry. So, let me repeat that. I'm stoned. How, how does your ADHD affect your music? Is it harder to write or find a good flow for your music? Okay, so I did read it right. That's a really good question. Um, I think it, it depends on a lot of things. There's certain times that like I'm just kind of full blown ADHD and I can just write the track if like I'm really feeling the beat, I'm really in it and like I can just get it done. There's other tracks where because of the ADHD it actually like makes it harder because sometimes I go on to like autopilot and the things I write on autopilot are to me like super basic. It's like 20 2012 Chris it's like 2008 Chris when I was rapping so it helps me like get my flows and my structure right but I definitely have to like re-edit it and make sure that it's like up to par with what I'm trying to write now and the stories I'm doing now and the things I'm trying to say um but it's really like a give and take a lot of a lot of the time I'd say I get distracted like it's actually more of a curse than a blessing um in the sense of writing because I do get distracted I do like have a hard time focusing and i'm trying a lot to like discipline myself to be able to do that and it's not the easiest thing although i will say as like a superpower i could freestyle my ass off like that is a good trait to have <laughs> in, in, as an artist like i mean shout out to holden for starting crossroads and like having me freestyle for like four hours straight and like always keeping me on my game that's that's some love right there but i mean i've been freestyling forever holden is like a very underrated visionary yep yeah i mean no, no, for no. now yeah. i think i think it's starting to change he's an underrated visionary because then when he does shit, people are like the fuck and yeah, I'm, uh, like, that's. I'm like, that's we warned you. We fucking warned you. Like, like oh you, man, you didn't, oh like, man. We fucking. Bro, you're you? you're you're preaching to the choir. The amount of times I'm, I tell people like, bro, I I told you he's right. I told you. Yeah. I, I I stopped. I, even, I stopped arguing a long time ago. I just went, bro. Yeah. He's right. That's I, it be able to get to the shows because i'm not in montreal like i used to be but and like i could just see like everything going on from like videos and shit and i'm like i told you he was right <laughs> like yeah asking chrome what does he do consistent to pursue his positive mood <laughs> yo you're <laughs> questions bro i never get questions from my guests like this you're you're um you man i mean no not that I can donate, it, but I do smoke a lot of weed <laughs> to help mit to help manage my my like brain and my thoughts. I do kind of think that like because I was heavily medicated as a child, it's kind of the only thing I know. So it keeps me in like a very uh I would say sustainable state. But <laughs> man, like for people who don't smoke weed and who try to stay in a positive state, I think that like whatever you have as like a passion or something that makes you feel good or happy you gotta just like take time to do it thank god that like i found a way to turn writing music into like art and music and like performing and then trying to make it into like lucrative and make money right but i love writing i love expressing myself through music i love the feeling that i get when i do it and it's also like a self-reflecting process for myself. So maybe hopefully this helps somebody in the chat, but like, because I'm so brutally honest in my songs and I'm, and I have to like actually sit here and admit things like openly admit to hurting this woman, openly admit to cheating, openly admit to like whatever the fuck it is. Right. It's like me, bro. 
podcast. I'm very vulnerable about myself first before I get other people to start talking about their problems because I'm like, if I talk about mine, maybe they'll feel more comfortable talking about theirs. You know what I mean? Like, you can't right. just go like, so tell me every issue you have. Like, <laughs> well, that's really well, yeah. So it's like because I do this, bro. Listening to my songs, like playing back my songs to myself, it's like, yo, I really said yeah. that. Like, I really, bro, and then I used to do the same shit in my music. I used to, like I said, like it was all like more bar structure, but like everything was very like just honest and like like that's what like joe budden like was probably in my like top five hip-hop artists back in the day with his mood music albums and shit like that so like i had that i i took a lot of like i guess impressionism from him like when he like his like just vulnerability on songs and like still being able to rap it the way he did i was like holy shit like if he could do it like that i could do it like that and then, like, I was very brutally honest. Some people are like, yo, I think you're going a little too far. And I'm like, I don't think I'm going far enough. <laughs> no, no, I I think there is, like, a learning curve. Yeah. Um, I think there's certain parts in, like, my career. Yeah, I think people have to accept that people have problems when they're making music, too. So, like, they have to accept the problems with the music. But, like, and this is just for me. But your problems got to change. Yeah, I don't know for sure. Like the the, I know that like it's weird. I guess coming from me because I really only just write like broken hearted love songs. But if you really go back through all my music, it's like, I mean, nobody really has music for me at fifteen or anything. They're all like secretly locked away and like and written in some phones I may have lost or whatever. But if you look at like if you were to look at the lyrics or even like. Yo, if you go back and listen to Broken, uh, Whoa, Broken Carousel, like that's essentially a love song that intertwines <laughs> with um, like life. But the problems I had on that song are not the same problems that I have on ADHD. No. They're not the same problems I have on Holotape 3, and they're not the same level of honesty. So it's like at, at a certain point, I do feel like as an artist or even as a person, like, yo, your shit needs to change. Like nobody's, I, I personally believe like nobody cares if you have problems, but your problems can't be the same problems from like, you know, four yeah, years ago. Like you can't be rapping about the same issue over and over and over. I mean, I mean, when it comes to like making like those like very like wholehearted like love type songs or like broken hearted songs, sure you can mm -hmm. make like songs like that over and over in different in different ways and more in depth or less in depth, you know, whatever you want. But when you're like rapping about like your issues like bar wise, you can't just keep changing the lyrics but still talking about the same issue because people are just like, Well, like yeah, we get you could rap. Like <laughs> but can you yeah. change can you change topics? Is, but I think there's also like a level of accountability oh. that needs to be taken as well. Like a 100%. lot of a lot of my older songs were like I would be blaming the person. A lot of my newer own accountability and what I did for um for the thing. Like I've got a song actually I performed an exclusive performance with Obsidian at uh, opening up for Smith Smith and Wesson. Uh, that verse alone, and that song, I don't know when that's coming out. That's that's her track. I was featured on it, but that verse alone, like, I openly admit to like the person I am and like how quick I could like change my life and do shit. But I also, I mean, I'm playing a role in the song, of course. But like, I also called her out because like I, I have a line where I I straight up tell her like I've seen her phone. I yeah. see what's on like your lives. I see what's on your posts. Like I'm not, I'm not clueless to like what you've also been doing as much as we've been like pretending. Right. But so I feel like that's a good representation of what I'm trying to explain in my point right now is just like, I like to be real and authentic with my music and talk about real situations without being super one-sided. Like a lot of times I hear music and it's always blaming somebody else. And then I'm just like, okay, but if I sat down, on with you and had a like had a serious combo, the story wouldn't be the same. Yeah, no, sorry? I, no, sorry, I just had like a random delivery of Mountain Dew to me. 
<laughs> Those are the best. Those are the best. But that's just like how I feel about certain about about shit. Like, no man, bro. Honestly, I I really actually like I told you I appreciate that. Like, you you you. I feel like you build the foundation like story wise before you start writing the track. You have an idea about the track before you start writing it. Like most people do, you would think, but a lot of people just hear a beat and start writing a song. And not really. I'm more. It depends. Really, really? <coughs> I see you really focusing on like the the concept and going in on it. So like, I had a studio session a couple weeks ago, and I was sent two beats. The first beat was an R and B esque love song type of thing that's coming out soon i guess as well uh shout out kd two times by the way for that the minute he sent me that beat he already knew he was like chrome's gonna kill this like chrome's gonna body this here like, he already knew i heard the beat that's always he me, you know, when people are like yo this guy's gonna kill this beat it's for him and that's he, like he told me, like, he, he was super honest and genuine about it. Like, we were at the studio, and he was like, bro, I sent you that beat, and I, I didn't even question it. Like, I didn't have no hesitation. I knew you were going to kill it. I got the beat. I wrote the song. Um, I, well, I heard his part, and then once I heard his part and I got the theme, bro, it's, it just came to me. Like, it just some weird, like, from the heavens to my brain to, like, to the paper, like, but if I look back at the song itself, I mean, I've been through that scenario before. Like, the specific theme of the song, I don't want to give it away. But, like, I've been through that scenario a bazillion times. Like, it's not, it's not like it's hard for me to recreate that. So, I'll just pick out from certain, like, parts of my life, kind of mash them together, and that's the verse. Depending on, like, what the verse is, right? There's some of them... A lot, a lot of my future verses, depending on the theme or what like we're doing and the artist wants me to do, I'll keep it authentic to myself and the story is going to sound super linear and cohesive and it makes sense. But in my brain, it's like I've, I've picked parts of different stories in my head and, and created this masterpiece, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other beat he sent me, a little bit more harder, a little bit more, I'd say gangsterish, a little bit for lack of a better term. But it was harder than what I usually do. And I still kept it the same thing. It still got that, like, Chris Cromey heartbreak, lovey-dovey feel to it. I also kind of, like, stepped my game up, and I'm kind of, like, talking to rappers, like, y'all are mad that I'm out here. Like, I sat back and did my shit quietly. Like, I, I, I proved my way the way I was supposed to. And, like, you know, I've been running around, check my shit, right? Yeah. Um... But that one, he was like, I didn't know what you were going to do with it. I didn't know how you were going to, like, move with it. And that one, it took me – I still knew the theme, but it took me a little bit more to kind of, like, structure structure the verse and figure out what I was trying to say. Right. Um, but then on, like, a whole third arm, like a whole other side <clears> – <throat> When I sit down to write a project, like, I currently am in the middle of working on my uh, my – fifth project fourth fifth fifth project uh ep mixtape i'm just calling it a project and i've got that's where that's the project hollow tape three is on um i've got two other songs that are finished that i'm going to be pushing and i've got other songs that i got to finish up recording get mixed mastered and all that stuff so how but in terms of like writing this it it's taking me a lot longer because i i, I have a flow of like the project i want to build Right. So, like, when I'm building a project entirely, I have certain features. I even tell the features, like, yo, you can't just write anything. Like, I need you to write this type of verse. Say what you want and, and do you as the artist. I never... Follow the concept. Yeah, but, like, if I'm out here talking about dishonesty and loyalty, I don't want to really deal with, you know... I guess gang violence or selling drugs or whatever it is, right? Like, like stick with the theme as much as you can. Be as honest and vulnerable in your emotions as much as you can. Um, but that that takes me a lot longer because, like, I've got an actual story from track one to the ending track that 
I'm, I want to go with. I'm definitely gonna have to do a song with you. I never. I never. I will. I never. Definitely have to because we're gonna have one of the saddest songs in Canada. <laughs> Bro, I, I, I'm gonna. My goal is to like legitimately cry on stage one day. <laughs> like I'm gonna legit just like tear up. I don't know how. I'm just gonna like do it. Just go do it. I hear this. It, it, if it gets to the point where the crowd's big enough, I think when you see the crowd, I think that'll just do it for you. No, actually, actually, the, the Smith & Wesson show, yeah, apparently, big, I was, like, performing. Big good look to that, bro. Big good looks on that appreciate one. That it. Appreciate that's it. That's why. And shout out to fucking Holden for hosting. Yeah. He sounded like... No, shout out to Holden for getting me on to that, bro. Like, like... I just want to take this second to really say, like, bro, people don't really know the opportunities that this man has been giving me and a lot of fucking people. Yeah. Like, a lot of fucking people. Yeah, he, like, he's, he's straight up. He's genuine in, in, in his personality, you know? He's very... And he's... He, he's just... He, he's all around just very... He's smart. He's, he's, like I said, an underrated visionary. I don't give a fuck what people say. Uh, he's He takes on different ventures just to test the waters and he's honest if he likes it he likes it if he doesn't he doesn't that's how it is that's how it is but definitely i was a really good look um big fucking i don't know great fucking amazing i'm so mad i was gonna be at that show but i had to stay back yeah. because of family reasons again i'm so mad i missed them it's okay it was a vibe it was a serious vibe we all killed it, it we really all did our thing <laughs> but like I was saying though, I performed ADHD and sometimes, man, I can't hear shit from the crowd because like they got the speakers that are just in my face and they're like blasting the beat and shit. And bro, it's just like apparently people are like singing my ADHD chorus to me and I'm like, wait, what? Like I actually got to have that moment and I couldn't things things, man, when you put in the work and you really like do what you got to do and you practice and you just give it your all all the time whether you fuck up or you don't fuck up bro people love that shit the best thing and that's like is if you fuck up on stage don't stop and acknowledge the fuck up just keep going bro bro no okay unless you like severely fuck up on stage like the mic spikes up yeah. or Fucking, you completely miss, like, the whole line or your next verse or you don't know where to start. Like, unless you completely, like, absolutely just fuck up. Bro, like, I've, I've butchered lines by accident because it's just like, yo, I'm doing, like, a, whatever, 20, 30-minute set and it, it, you're on song, like, five and you're trying to, like, breathe and shit. Like, I've made mistakes i've butchered lines and honestly as long as like the flow is good and you keep that like authenticity and you just keep going bro the crowd's gonna love you no matter what if they really want to hear you spit this shit 100 100 they're gonna go to your they're gonna go listen to it you know what i mean like another, you want the final product another, go do that another thing i learned is like if you have like a major blank out on a track when you're performing your set or something when I had my, because like I used to fucking drink a lot because of my nerves when I was performing. So like I definitely mm -hmm. had a few nights where I was a little too fucked up and forgot like mm -hmm. a lot of shit or like like my main track I'd forget like half a verse and I'd be like fuck. So at the end of it I started like thinking about it and I'm like you know what I usually have like five minutes where I have crowd interaction and shit. So instead mm -hmm. of like five minutes of interaction I just redid the song. I mean. Fair. See, so for my set, right? Like, I I have a whole of, what? They're there for that, right? So, like, if they know that song, they want it performed well. Like, why not give them that that little like fix up and like try to like be like, I'm sorry, I'm so drunk. <laughs> I mean, I guess it it depends. It depends on the song. It depends on the vibe of the crowd. I I guess like yeah. I've yet to have like I've had an encore. And actually, to, to connect what we're talking about, at an encore, it was at uh, our show at Timmy's. It was NARS 3. I did my whole set, and then 
um by the time i came to the very very last song i couldn't breathe anymore bro like i was even on stage looking at the crowd like guys i love y'all but like i ain't <laughs> i don't know if i can do this but the song that it was it was well broken carousel and that's like the like the the one of my best songs ever to be fair that's and the, everybody the loved chrome, it that's the chris chrome crystal yeah yeah it, it, it was it just so happens it was the first song i ever like recorded and everything and like i just it, it set the bar for where i'm supposed to be I, mean, I don't know man people can go listen to it and let me know and i mean how you feel but the point i'm trying to make is i do the song i told everybody in the intro before i started i was like listen if i stop breathing and pass out it's on y'all like i told you i can't do this little joke everybody everybody loved it it was it was it was cute so it was fine did the song halfway through the second verse and i don't know if you've ever heard it but like in my second verse i, I do like three to four stuff. different Pardon? i have listened to all your stuff appreciate it um in the second verse i do like three to four different flows in that verse alone yeah so at one point i can't breathe i cut like i just drop the line but i start dancing <laughs> and everybody needs to start dancing bro like no matter what you gotta like feel your own music you gotta love that like you gotta be able to vibe to your own stuff because if you can't perform your shit at least you can vibe to it dance get a little like you, you got little shimmy off you gotta do more than just stand there behind the microphone bro like you're 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 like not an opera singer you know like you're a rapper and like like the the like your beginning rap performances like like starting up like startup performances like openings and shit like that unless it's like a big big major like mm -hmm. you get called on a tour you're just you're doing regular stages and shit you know so like you gotta make the most of that stage because like you don't have anything mm -hmm. like extravagant you know what i mean like i do agree i do think also that there is like a vibe to just standing in one one place and like rapping if you've got like the whole mic stand yeah. and it's one of those but like the song yeah for sure for sure exactly. but I, I feel like like your distant lover song would be perfect for just standing there i, I gotta try that one day i think i gotta try that one day i think if you had a band behind it it'd be even better i i'm gonna take that in consideration like there's a lot there's a lot of like expanding help. i want to do i have friends I have a friend that has a great band out there that can help. I might I can link you guys up and you can talk about it. Yeah, definitely. Like, you'll have we'll, a show we'll every after weekend. This. You'll have, you'd have a show every weekend probably because he performs all the time. Where is he? Out in Montreal yeah. or over by? Well, you? he's in Chateau. Oh, that's close. Yeah, so that's close. It's not far. It's by my, it's by my and when you that's, that's close. Cross, when you cross over, you go say what's up to Willie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's <laughs> my, my mom's uh, my mom's is out there. Yeah, so. Most of my family on my dad's side is up there, bro. So like that's why I usually that's why when I'm in Montreal, I'm like I know like I know the island well itself, but mm. if I'm in chatting stuff, I'm like I just I'm just walking around sweet all day. But like I mean like Shady Gay, Saint Constant, Saint Catherine, all of the South Shore is where I grew up. Like I'm originally a short kid. I only came to Montreal like six, seven years ago. I mean I've been chilling in Montreal for like a good minute, but like living in Montreal has only been like six, seven years ago. So, like that that whole area is just my whole area. But just to finish my point, artists need to dance on stage. If you fuck up and you forget your shit, just start dancing, feel the vibe, catch back on, and kill your set. It's always a good thing. It worked. It, it and feel it. But like, yeah, yeah. I know. I agree, man. People, they they definitely need to like. That's why, like, <clears throat> like you were saying, like the whole like switching flows and like having losing your breath and shit. Like, obviously, like everyone knows that breath control is like top importance in like performing. And then, like, also crowd con interaction and control, man. Like, when I went to see the Jizza like a couple weeks ago, like he was on stage and like for his age, like he was moving around and shit. But like, people didn't even have to like. <laughs> like he didn't have to do anything. He had them in awe. It was I was like in amazement. I was like, he well, has there's, to... a, there's a thing to that, right? Like, bro, it was just like he was there, and people were like, "Oh my god." Well, I mean, there's a thing to that, right? Like, <clears throat> it's crazy because every time I hit a stage, um, like, and it's it's my official set, right? Like, 
I'm not like featured on somebody's set and I don't like, I'm not doing like a quick little song on their set as for like love and props, right? Like my official set, <clears throat> every time I go on, I have to take into account that I've got like a minute and a, I got like a minute intro to tell everybody. Like my set starts with me explaining to everybody that my name is Chris Chrome. I'm an emotional rapper with ADHD. I like to rap and cry on mics and sometimes I rap fast. I've had different variations because depending on the night and when I perform, I may be a little bit more tipsy or high, but however that goes is however that goes. Um, but that's essentially it. And I explained to everyone, like, you know, I know we've been having like great music all night. We about to cry a little. And then I explain like my ADHD and I start building like this atmosphere. Right. And then I do ADHD all the time. First song, but, and then it gets everybody like into what I'm doing, but, for the follow-up, it's like, it's not finished. Like, the second part, I start explaining the second song, but it connects to the first. Yeah. So, like, with dealing with ADHD, and I explain that, and I connect it, and it's like a whole, like, movie. Like, everything I try to do is storytelling to a core. Like, to the core. Yeah. It's, it's all connected, and I think it brings some sort of aspect of life to what I try to do for my performances. And even within my music, like... That's why I did the hollow tape series, right? I did that because through all of my projects, they're going to be scattered, however it goes. But you ever play Fallout? Yeah. The game? A couple times. Yeah. It's essentially where I got it from. I got it from that. And they're essentially like recordings of my life throughout all of my projects. And they tell one story as they go. And so after, since you have the three installments for hollow tape, the next project that you're working on, is it a fourth installment or a brand new title? No, well, Hollow Tape 4 is, I mean, I can tell everybody I don't care. Hollow Tape 4 is on the project I'm working on now. Right now, I'm fo I'm working on a full-length project. Um, it's, I guess it's a mixtape. I, I don't know, man. Like, I make, I don't know what to call it because it's, I don't know if it's an album. Well, if it's under 30 minutes, it's an EP. Dude, logistically, it could be whatever the numbers match up to, to be fair. I just call everything a project I, at this point. Yeah, cause like, just, right? Like, project. <laughs> so that's, that's how I'm going to label it. Um, but it's a full length. <clears throat> it's a story, like everything else I do. Uh, Hollow Tape 3 and 4 are going to be on it. So y'all can, can be ready and check that out. So definitely that'll be there. Um but it depends. Like it's not. It's 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 this. The hollow tape series itself is really more like for my fans and and people who know me and like people who are interested in going down that specific rabbit hole and want to like go down that story, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> I don't know if I'm gonna like push hollow tape for like a single. Maybe maybe not. Maybe it's five. Maybe it's six. Maybe it's eight, ten. Like. It really does come with time, but it will be a consistent thing throughout my career I've chosen to do. Like, that's just something that it does. If it takes time, it takes time. I know, you know, life changes, different projects get made, different projects may not have that on it, but it is what it is, we'll really. More. Like, we'll more. But oh, there'll definitely be more. There'll definitely be more. And as, like, my life evolves and levels up and just we keep doing just wild and amazing things, there's just going to be more stories. There's just going to be more, like, things to tell. And, yeah. yeah you, you've definitely been leveling up since <clears throat> our last conversation. And I, I, I get to watch it, so it's cool. Yeah, I got busy. I started doing lyrical videos, started performing, oh. started dropping more music. And I need to talk to you about too when i put out my first track i'm gonna need a lyric video well not my first track my track but you know what i mean i got you but, i got you i gotta uh, got get ready for the willy interview but we're definitely gonna catch up again like i said we'll have you on the podcast soon i just gotta finish editing some of these episodes but um uh thank you for just joining but the interview is just about to end but you can watch it after i post it and uh, I'll send you a collaborator invite, so that way you can share it on your page, too. Cool. So, so uh, plug anything you want to plug, bro, before we take off, and then I'll do my outro, and we're good. Everybody, love and take care of yourselves.
my name is Chris Chrome. You can find me everywhere on all socials at Chris Chrome 93. Again, that is at Chris Chrome 93. And on Spotify and Apple Music and any other like streaming platforms, it's just Chris Chrome. Word. And I'm your man, Hanley, from On The Line With. This has been Car Chats, episode 64. Like you said, the man Chris Chrome out of Montreal. Go check out his Hollow Tape 3, Distant Lover. He's only a few hundred... Uh, streams away from hitting 15,000 so let's hit, help him hit 15,000 by Monday so we can get a music video lyric videos on his YouTube go check it out uh, thank hey, you for joining man. everybody if you don't follow me please give me a follow if you don't follow Chris please give him a follow and uh, keep supporting all the local artists keep supporting all your local businesses keep supporting your local broke podcasters like me and uh, yeah much love Chris thanks for coming on bro I'm glad we could talk and we'll catch up again soon no worries. You be safe, bro, bro. You too, bro. Take care. Bye. Peace.